Girls and guys, welcome back to another video. So glad that you're joining me again. Uh, just appreciate it, uh, you checking in with me every week as we uh, do these lessons, and we are still and last uh, in the book of Exodus. This is our last week in the book of Exodus. We've done a really quick, uh, big picture view of the book of Exodus and all that's been going on with uh, the Israelites and as Moses leads them. And so we're in the last uh, five chapters of the book of Exodus today. And so we'll be going through those and doing that overview once again. And uh, so we're going to have a good time sort of ending our study in the book of Exodus. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to do a song. And today we're going to do Happy Day. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's a great song. So check this song out. And I will see you back here in just a couple of minutes. Exodus chapter 35. We're going to start in verse 4 and then uh, work through. Again, I'm not going to read all five chapters. Uh, again, I would encourage you to do that this week uh, as you 
maybe have some quiet time, um, look at those uh, five chapters, uh, along with maybe with your parents reading it to you or however you want to do that. Um, but today we're going to be learning about how God really uh, wants a person to joyfully give of their resources. And we, when we joyfully give, we honor God. And God wants us to really give ourselves and our possessions uh, in, in, uh, in a way that honors him. And, uh, you know, we can say to, to God, hey, the things that I have are yours and I'll use them to your honor and to your glory, whatever it is. Uh, you know, whether you're giving money to the church uh, to honor him and uh, to, to worship him, giving is a form of worship. Uh, or if you are giving of other resources, maybe, um, you know, you have something that you can share with someone that, that you don't give up completely, but uh, you can share it. Maybe it's your Bible uh, or maybe it's some other things that you have. Uh, the, but when we are generous in our spirit and we're willing to give whatever, uh, God blesses us uh, with that generosity. And it shows us that we know that he's going to take care of us, that that we don't have to worry about ourselves, but that God is going to walk us through each and every circumstance uh, of our of our lives and every situation that we're in. And so the verse uh, we want to look at today is Psalm 90, verse 17 says, May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us, establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. And so whatever we do, we do that God will give a God gives us favor for that, and we have the favor of God in our lives. So, uh, by way of introducing this lesson, um, I have it's kind of hard to see, but I've got ten dimes here. And uh, if you said to me, Pastor Jerry, you've got these ten dimes. What can we do with these dimes? Um, you might say, Well, you know what? We can buy a candy bar and a vending machine for fifty cents. So. We take that 50 cents and we have 50 cents left and you say, okay, what can we do with that? Maybe we could, uh, you know, buy something else with it. Now, unfortunately, 10 dimes don't go as far as they used to, right? And uh, it may get worse here, who knows? But, um, but if we say, hey, we're gonna spend it on these different things and we spend it up and we don't give any to God, then we kind of, we're kind of missing the point. Now, maybe some of you thought the first thing is, hey, a portion of those 10 dimes needs to go to God. You might have said, well, at least one dime uh, would go to God. That would be considered tithing. And um, giving 10% back to God, that's what God really establishes in his word, that we would give 10% of what we have back to him. And so um, understanding, though, that giving of our resources is an act of worship. And um, this is a, the picture painted here is of Israel at a point in their in their history where they're really going to worship God by doing that. And so if we look in verse 4 of chapter 35, it says, Moses said to all the congregation of the people of Israel, this is the thing that the Lord has commanded. Take from among you a contribution to the Lord. Whoever is of a generous heart, let him bring the Lord's contribution, gold, silver, and bronze, blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twined linen, goat's hair, tanned rams, skins and goat skins, acacia wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense and onyx stones and stones for setting for the ephod and for the breastplate. And so he goes to them and says, God is asking you to give. And so um, you know, when we look back at our own local history here at Murraysville Alliance Church, you know, this building didn't always exist here. Uh, many, many years ago, back in the mid-1960s, a group of people wanted to put a church here. And so they were meeting somewhere else and they were praying that God would provide resources for them, that they might be able to purchase the land that this building now sits on and, and build a building. And so God worked through that small group of people and they were able to buy the land that we have the church on now and they built the first portion of this church. And when you're here on Sundays, if you're in classrooms downstairs um, or if you're in the craft kitchen, uh, there are parts of this church that were the original building 
that existed here. And then uh, Pastor Dan came in uh, 1988, I think, and um, through his leadership and guidance, the church grew and grew and grew to a point where they needed to build and add on. And so they added on the current sanctuary and uh, the downstairs, actually the room I'm meeting in, was built in that phase of construction back in 2001 or something like that. And so before, this was just property. There was nothing on it. And then God's people that wanted to see this church get established came and started uh, the building process. They built the parsonage. Uh, they built the pavilion that's up in the back of the property. Uh, they built this building. And uh, then they built the new section of building. And then a few years ago, we added parking space and we built an elevator. And so, but before that, uh, this didn't exist. And the only way this place exists is because people were generous in the spirit and in their giving. And they gave financially so that we could build the building. Currently, today, we are debt free. We don't owe any money on the building, no mortgage, nothing. We are completely debt free in terms of the property that we own and the building that we own. And so that's pretty amazing. But it was because people were generous in spirit. It was the same with the Israelites. They became very generous in their spirit and they began to give and give and give. And so they keep coming. Every morning they would come and they would give more of their, their resources. Some gold, some silver, some bronze, some linens, some wood. I mean, just whatever they had. Um, and they made these contributions. And so um, then he said, now I need people that are skilled. And so people that maybe didn't have money or gold or silver or bronze or stuff, they had talent. And so it says in verse 30, that Moses said to the people of Israel, see, the Lord is called Bezalel and the son of Uri, son of Hur, the, the tribe of Judah. And he has filled him with the spirit of God, with skill, with intelligence, with knowledge, and with all craftsmanship. And he is going to be the one who works on the gold and the silver and the bronze and the cutting stones for setting and carving of the wood. And he has inspired him to teach both him and Oheliab, the son of Asermach, the, of the tribe of Dan. And these two men are full of skill and they are going to lead us in the building of the tabernacle. Now, last week I showed you a, a poster uh, of how the tabernacle would be set up and how the tribes would be sitting around them. If you want to go back and check out that video, you can. Uh, but you can see that picture of how everything was supposed to be set and in its place. And so uh, these two guys, uh, Bezalel and Oheliab, uh, they are in charge and they bring other craftsmen in and they begin to craft and make a place of worship. And so they do that. It says... Um, when you look at after everything's been counted, uh, that the people have given more than 3,000 pounds of gold, more than 9,000 pounds of silver, and more than 7,000 pounds of bra, uh, bronze. They gave so much that Moses came out and commanded the people to stop giving because they'd given more, whatever they'd given has exceeded what they needed. Uh, what an awesome thing because of their spirit of worship. They wanted God's tabernacle this place of worship to be the best it could be and they were willing to give whatever they had over and above what they needed to because they were in the spirit of worship at this time now israel isn't always like this but in this particular moment they are serving god the way they should be serving god and it's a testimony to us that that's how we need to be in our lives we need to be serving god in a way that we honor him and we overflow in our willingness and our generosity and our ability to give. And so because the people had obeyed the Lord's command to give and did so beyond what was required, then they wanted to give themselves to the service of helping make the tabernacle. And so the idea here, um, boys and girls, is that God loves a person with a generous heart. And, and as we look to give to God in different ways, we may not have thousands of pounds of gold or silver or bronze, 
or fine purple linen or the other things that were required for the tabernacle, but God has given us things that we can be generous with, right? With our time, with the resources he has given us, uh, the money that he's given us, um, you know, the gifts that he's given us. You know, these two men, uh, Bezalel and Elhiliab, were given a skill set that they could use to craft the furniture and to build the tabernacle and to have oversight of it and to lead the other skilled craftsmen in building this structure so they could worship God. And so the next few chapters talk about what they built and how they built it. And, um, and, and it gives all the descriptions. It tells us how they made the ark and how Bezalel uh, made the ark of acacia wood. And he made it two cubits, which is about 36 inches long and, um, and then a cubit and a half wide and then I think two cubits high. And uh, so he made the ark a place where God would come and, and commune with his people and give uh, the blessing to the priest to bless the people and all of the things that was going to be required to do that. He is crafting all of these things because God gave him the skill set. You know, you say, well, Pastor Jerry, I may not have all kinds of money. I'm not super wealthy. That's OK. But God has given you skills and abilities and he's given you a generous heart and he's given you kindness and he's given you Jesus Christ as your savior. And you can take those things and you can say, I may not have millions and millions of dollars, but I do have these things. And what I have, I'm going to be generous with those things. I'm going to honor God by sharing these different things. That's what the people of Israel did. And so they they make the, the furniture, they make the ark and they make the, the, the table for the um, for the showbread and they make the lampstand and you know they make the altar of incense and so they make all these different things and then they make the exterior walls and they make the interior and they make the holy place and then they make the holy of holies and they go through all the things that they're supposed to do uh, the altar even the altar of burnt offering they make all of these things out of the stuff that was donated in order to worship God the way God asked them to worship him. And so they do all of these different things. And now the tabernacle is ready to be set up. And so they set it up in the middle of the camp and they, they have the garments made for the priests that are ready to be worn uh, by them. And then it says in chapter 40, the last chapter of the book of Exodus, that everything was set up, everything was made right, everything was consecrated to the Lord by anointing all of it with oil. And then he brought Aaron and Aaron's sons and the Levites in and Moses dressed Aaron in the high priest's clothing and anointed him with oil and setting Aaron apart to God's service. And so Aaron becomes the first high priest of uh, the, the nation of Israel. And um, God, it says that God comes in a cloud and he comes and communes with Aaron and his sons and with Moses. And it covered the tabernacle and the glory of God filled the place. I mean, that's the desire of all of us is to have God fill us and the glory of God be shown upon us. Uh, and, and because of our generosity and our willingness to worship him, not just with singing and not just with hearing the word of God being preached, but through our own gifts and abilities and resources. And so God came down and dwelled among in the tabernacle among his people and. Um, and it was the it was the cloud that came down was most likely the cloud that led them in the day when they were fleeing from Egypt and would lead them. And now he's using that to come and show them that God is in the midst of that. And um, the scholars also think this was the same cloud which came down to the mountain on the day of Jesus ascension and received him back into heaven. It's a demonstration of God's power. And the last verses of Exodus remind us that the cloud over the tabernacle showed the Israelites that they were to move in on in their journey. As long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle, the people were to stay where they were. When the cloud lifted, the people were supposed to fold up their tents, gather everything up, and follow the cloud to a new place. At nighttime, of course, a pillar of fire took a place of the cloud, and Israel could always see a physical phenomenon that showed them that the Lord was leading them. And so God physically demonstrates 
to the people of Israel that he is leading them by either the cloud or by the fire. And so it was a great picture and they would need that because they would struggle with their faith. They would struggle with believing in God. They would struggle when times would get tough and they would be like, we don't have anything to eat. We don't have anything to drink. And God, you're just forsaking us out in this desert. And God had to really work hard with them. In fact, the people of this generation never got to see the promised land because of their rebellious nature, because they would continually doubt God. And so it wasn't until this generation passes away, save for a couple of people, Joshua and Caleb, they're the only two of this generation of people that get to go into the land of Canaan and begin to uh, retake the land. They're it, because everyone else passed away in the wilderness because of their doubt. But at this moment and in this time, they were right where they needed to be, worshiping God the way they needed to worship God through their generosity. Boys and girls, we need to have a generous spirit. We need to be able to be uh, filled with that spirit that we're willing to give of ourselves, no matter what God's blessed us with, because God's blessed us all with something. If we're willing to give that to God, he will bless it just over and over and over. And if it's your heart attitude, which is in the right spot, if it's something you can do other, way, other ways, you know, maybe you can help feed hungry people or uh, find shelter for homeless people or any number of ways that God can use your generous spirit to serve his purpose. God wants us to be willing to say, yes, God, I will serve you however you ask me to. That's the key point, okay? God wants us to have that generous spirit, to bless the work of our labor, right? The results of our labor to bless us when we do it in the right attitude and we do it as worship to God. Okay, let's have a prayer. God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for this powerful lesson on, on generosity and its form of, it's a form of worship when we are so giving of our spirit and of our resources, it's a form of worship. And we're so thankful that we know that that's how we can do that. We can write tithe checks and offering checks or, or cash money in our offering plates and God, you can, you can bless that and you can use it to further your kingdom, to bring more people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, to allow our church to be a place of, uh, of salvation that people can come to or that we can send people out to draw people to you in our communities. God, we wanna be your children who worship you in every way that we can whether it's giving of our money, whether it's giving of our song, whether it's listening to your word and learning from it, um, whether it's fellowshipping with our other believers in Jesus Christ, whether it's being in community with our fellow believers in Jesus Christ, there's so many ways we can worship. When we do outreach, when we share our faith, those are all forms of worshiping you because we want people to know you. That's so important. So bless us as we do that. Teach us how to be generous, how to have that generous spirit in everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls, hey, listen, have a great week. I hope this lesson was inspiring to you and, and to teach you and encourage you to worship through your giving and to worship through your generosity because God loves that type of worship. All right? Have a great week and we will see you on the next video.